Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Vermont House Committee on Commerce and Economic Development. Um, we are coming back from a short break. We're here to uh, meet with some high school seniors um, that have gone through VZAC um, to, to uh, find out, uh, to go, uh, to help them on their career pathway um, after high school. Um, these are four students that were um, on a Zoom meeting uh, couple of weeks ago that I was able to attend. Um, I thought it would be good for the committee to um, to meet them and to hear from them and actually have a roundtable discussion with them. I think what we're really wanting to do is pick your brains a little bit to understand um, how your, how your um, travels through the education system went um, and some thoughts that you might have on questions that we may have for you. So welcome. Um, it's good to see you again. Um, I know it's a little difficult to see uh, see us, uh, especially with a mask on, but the pictures are a little on the small side as well. But um, I, I thank you for, for joining us this afternoon and taking time to talk to us. And Patrick, uh, thank you for setting this up. I appreciate it. Um, is there anything you want to lead off with before we uh, talk to our students? No, I'll just I'll just say uh, thank you for taking uh, taking them into your committee and talking with them. Uh, you definitely want to hear from them. They had some great things to share with us uh, when they met in our panel conversation. And uh, I'll leave it to you, uh, Chairman Marcotte, to kind of facilitate. Thank okay. you. Okay. Do, do we have uh, someone who wants to start us off? Maybe Braden. Yeah, my name is Braden Bixby, and I'm from North Camden, Vermont. I'm on the fire department currently. I volunteer at Clarendon, and I also am an intern at Rutland City. I'm oh. 17 years old. Senior. So what are your plans um, after high school? I want to become a firefighter slash paramedic. And I want to go to New Hampshire. It's a great school over in Laconia that I want to attend in the fall. I've already been accepted. Now I'm just looking to be on a department as a student living so I can work and get the experience, go on calls, work 24 hour shifts, everything like that. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Melody. Hi, I'm Melody. Um, I'm from Canaan, which is right next to the Canadian border. Um, I am obviously a senior. I'm taking a lot of college course classes as well as a internship because our school does school to work. So I'm able to go to a dentist's office and observe them to kind of get an idea if that's something I'm interested in. And then after high school, currently I'm planning on going possibly to St. Anselm because they have like good health programs, so I want to go get my pre-dental, like the prerequisites for dental school, and then possibly go into orthodontics. Great, congratulations. Reagan? All right, hello. Um, my name is Reagan Decker. I am from Enosburg. Um, I went to the high school there, but I'm doing early college. So I'm actually um, living on the Johnson campus and taking like all of my high school classes as college classes. Um, I'm hoping to come, well, I, I got accepted, so I'm coming back next year. Um, I'm gonna be in the education program because I wanna be a high school English teacher as of right now. So I think I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I'm gonna stay here the whole time, but I know I'm gonna for the next like year or so. Great. So. Um, just make sure you you keep up with what we're doing. Um, there's a lot of um, different scholarship programs that we're putting together in, in our workforce development bill, which is H703, that we'll be reporting on the floor tomorrow, uh, next week. And um, there may be some advantages for you to stay in Vermont and take your courses. Um, we may, we may uh, have some money there to help help you out. Um, if you promise to stay in the state and do some work for us when you graduate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Leah. 
Hi, my name is Leah Wheeler. I'm from Newbury, Vermont. Um, I attend Oxbow High School and I also go to Riverbend Career and Technical Center. I'm in the Health Science program. Um, I plan to go to college this fall and currently uh, next week, actually, my program is starting our LNA courses at Cottage Hospital. And um, when I get to college, I don't, I haven't chosen where I want to go yet. I'm still deciding on where I want to go. But um, when I get to college, I do hope to have my LNA. And uh, I do be, I, I hope to become an RN in, in labor and delivery. Okay. So um, I think maybe Mr. LaDuke had some questions that he, he handed to you all um, that you could probably answer before we um, get the committee in but to, to question. But before we start that, I think maybe I'll just ask the committee to in introduce themselves to you so that you know um, what part of the state we're all from uh, because we're, we're from all over. So I'm Mike Marcotte. Um, I was on the, uh, I was on the, the Zoom with you a couple of weeks ago um, and I'm from Coventry, Vermont and I chair the committee. Stephanie. I am Stephanie Jerome and I uh, live in Brandon and represent Brandon, Pittsford and Sudbury and I'm the ranking member of the committee. Uh, I'm uh, Kirk White. I live in Bethel and I represent Bethel, Rochester, Stockbridge and Pittsfield. And it'd be good if you raise your hand so they could actually tell <laughs> who we are and who's speaking with a mask on. It's hard to see. I'm Wayne LaRush. Uh, I represent uh, uh, Richford, uh, Berkshire, Franklin and Highgate and I live in Franklin, Vermont. Hi, I'm Lynn Dickinson. I live in St. Albans Town, and uh, I represent St. Albans Town, and um, I'm glad to see you here. And just so you know, Lynn, Lynn's husband is a dentist, and... Um, yes, Melody. And so they, they run a, a, a dental facility in, in St. Albans. Yes, and I'm also um, the chair of the board of the Vermont State College System, so Rick, I'm glad to see you're at NVU. John? Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here today. I'm John Kosenska. I'm from East Burke, uh, Vermont, and I represent uh, Linden, Sutton, and Burke in the Northeast Kingdom. Emma? And hi, everyone. I'm Emma Mulvaney Sanic. I represent a portion of Burlington, um, part of the Old North End and New North End of Burlington. There's 10 reps there, so the crew. Hi there. Uh, Mike Nigro, and I represent uh, one of the districts in Bennington. Hey, and one of our members is on the Zoom with you, uh, Representative Kitz Miller. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say hi. If you can't really see me except for a little face on the screen back there, but I'm just working from home this afternoon. So I, 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 I knew that Lynn was going to mention that uh, her husband is a dentist because that was going to ring pretty close to one of you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very, very interested in hearing what you've got to say. Uh, Turn it back over. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the only one missing is Vice Chair uh, Kimball. Uh, he's from Woodstock. He uh, is actually in, in the uh, House Education Committee right now, going over our workforce development bill, um, H 703, with, with the Education Committee. So um, welcome. And um, so let's, uh, let's go through the questions that, that were given to you. Chair Marco, why don't I just go ahead and, and, and verbalize at least the first one to get things kickstarted. Um, you and That's I good. kind of chat, chatted on the phone for a second and kind of crafted a couple of topics that are really kind of a continuation of our panel conversation. So um, our students were, were shared so much there. This is a great opportunity to have them continue to give us more information. So the first question that we came up with was, was really what's your perception of how CTE is presented in your school? And we talked about that a little bit in the panel, but what would you guys say to that? So um, when I first got to Oxbow, I mean, they pretty much put it out right in front of us in seventh grade. Um, I think, like I said before, I think I toured it maybe two or three times. Uh, the first time I toured it was actually in elementary school. So I knew about Riverbend from like the fifth grade. Um, so I did, we did, um, we knew what Riverbend was. We just uh, didn't really know what it was all about at the time, I guess you could say, or how it would help us in the future. But when we got to sophomore year and we actually took a tour of it and they explained to us that you can get college credit 
for a lot of your classes, that's when we really knew like, oh, this could actually come in handy and this could prepare us for our education in the future. I think um, Enosburg was in the same boat because they definitely made it like known that we had Cold Hollow. And I'm pretty sure it was like ninth grade or so where they made us take a class over there. So we'd have to walk over even if we weren't interested just so they could teach us about like what the building was and what the options were and how it would help us in the future. Um, a lot of students did Cold Hollow. They allowed us to actually partake in it starting our sophomore year, I think. I think so. 10th grade, yes, it was 10th grade. Um, they told us about it in middle school, but we didn't really know anything. We we're just like, oh, cool kids go to Cold Hollow. That's great. I didn't even know it was, I didn't know what it was, but I knew of it. So they definitely taught us a lot in our freshman year. And then obviously sophomore through senior year is when they actually let us do it, so. So I personally have not been in a CT program, but I talked to one of my friends who also goes to my school who has gone through it because they didn't really have like a big program until 2020, which they did it through our business teachers class. Um, so I'm just going to read what she told me, if you don't mind. Um, she said that it has been widely promoted to students. So it's a very well-known thing now ever since 2020. Um, and that the teacher is like very good at what she does and that it's really good for teaching students, whether since it's business related, so any students that want to be like in the business um, workforce or anything like that, or even for students who are unsure of what career they want to do, it's all kind of like based on students deciding on what they want to do with their future, whether they do want to go for business or not. And it's really helpful for them from what I've heard from students who have been in that program. And I think at one point, um, wasn't Canaan tied in with North Country in Newport, the Career Center? Um, I'm actually not entirely sure. Um, I just heard of this program newly throughout our business program. So I'm not entirely sure on that answer. Yeah, it was, would have made it pretty tough for, for you and Canaan to um, I think the North Country, the Career Center had a satellite there, maybe. Um, you're kind of, you're far up in the Northeast, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Raiden? Yeah, I feel like I didn't really get exposed to the Career Center until my freshman year. And I looked into it, I was thinking about doing culinary, but that shifted my goal shifted and I was looking into the public safety program, but it was more focused on like police, like the police side and like military side. So I wasn't really interested in that. So I decided to go back to like normal learning, but I feel like if we did it at a younger age down in Mill River, I feel like it would have been more successful. We got more kids to go through the program. Thank you. Go ahead. Brayden, I have heard uh, people speak about, oh, this is Stephanie Jerome, and I am from Brandon, so um, I, have, I know a little bit more about Stafford, the Stafford um, program, and I've heard people say that it would be really great if there was an EMS or firefighter training program at Stafford. Do you think that there would be a lot of interest from students in Mill River or other local schools in a program like that? Yeah, I've been talking to a lot of junior firefighters throughout the state, a lot of good friends with some people from Fairhaven, even Burlington, um, even from down south, like Bennington Way, Danby Way, and they would come up here to go to this program. I think it would be really great if Stafford opened it up to more like fire science, EMS based, not just police, because there's a lot of interest. It's just I feel like kids don't know how to capitalize on it. Yeah. And so you're you're serving now as a, in your local volunteer fire department? Yes. Yes. That's great. That's great because I know that all the fire departments certainly need or volunteer fire departments always need more members and love new younger members as well. Yeah. 
And it's good to know and get all the knowledge I can before I go off to school. It's nice being actually there on the incident and actually being hands-on, getting to see everything operate. It's awesome. And what kind of training do you, have you been able to take advantage of as a student? Are you able to do any of the firefighter training that happens at the police academy in Pittsburgh? I am not yet because I'm still under age, but like oh. um, this Saturday, I actually have a propane training to get like a certification for propane and just to work with propane. Um, and then there's like a water rescue course. So like there's stuff available that I can get, but not widely available like SCBA, that's like air pack training or like um, interior work. I, I can't do that yet because I'm not certified. And it's because of your age? Yes, you're just, strictly. You're just too young? Yes. Yeah, um, you, how old are you? I'm 17. You're 17, okay. Okay, so everything's away, available for 18 year olds. Yes, 18 year olds. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. And did we, um, was there another question, Patrick? Sure. Yeah, they they kind of they kind of leaked into the second question. So I'm going to jump us to the third question that we came up with, uh, Chairman. The should CTE courses be offered even earlier than they are now? And I think Reagan, you mentioned you took one in sophomore class, sophomore year. How early should CTE classes be offered to students in your minds? Um, I was not actually like in like a specific program for Cold Hollow. They just made us. Well, okay. Well, they did make us. They made us take a course about cold hollow gotcha. so we had to like walk over there in the winter and just sit there and they'd be like all right this is what our center has to offer this is like a specific program and this is how it can help you in your career when you're older and they taught us all about it so we were very well informed for our freshman year so by the time we were sophomores we like already knew if we wanted to do it or not and like what the process would be so if, so if you were to build on that, should all of that started years before that, or is that the right time? Um, I, I think it's the right time, but that's just me. I know like if I was in middle school and I had to like walk over there to like the high school career center and then like learn everything and then I'd have to wait. And then I just think it'd be very intimidating and you wouldn't really know as much as you should or like have a high school experience to where you're like oh I want to take normal classes like you should be given the like the option to just have a normal like school day and like regular education before like automatically jumping into like half of my day is going to be at the career center and then the other half is going to be an actual regular high school day I just think it would be like weird to not have that experience like the first year good point Others have a thought on on that the age of when we should start thinking about Career Center? Yeah, so I talked to a few people that have been part of the program, and surprisingly, I got a lot of, and I'm sorry if there's background noise, um, a people who said that it should start if it has to at sophomore year because ninth graders it may be harder for them because it may be at a difficult level since it's like preparing students for college. Um, that's what I've heard. I think there definitely are students who could probably handle it. I think it is based all on maturity of the students. That's just in my opinion, but I do understand where they come from, where maybe they should be exposed to it, but not completely a part of the program because they might not be entirely prepared for it, whether that's, um, like with the coursework that comes with it or whatever happens in that program. Other thoughts on that question? Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to even start maybe at like sixth grade to get like people exposed to the career center and like maybe like bring them up and like through middle school like add on slowly until like sophomore year where you can fully enter the program. But I think sophomore year is a great time to like start. You get your first couple years into like middle school and high school, and then you get it, you can choose what you want to do. But I think it's really necessary to have at least one year of normal high school. Okay. 
Leah, any thoughts? Um, well, I obviously can't speak for every vocational center, but at least for Riverbend, um, they, like I said, they've done a really good job of um, putting it out there. And I do know that even though the three period um, programs that are reserved, they're, they're, they're reserved for juniors and seniors, but um, I think I think freshmen and sophomores can do like one period uh, classes and everything. So even though it's not the three period programs where you can get college credit, um, you still get exposed to Riverbend in some form uh, just through one class. And um, I've, I know people who have taken it. I haven't taken those classes myself, um, but uh, I, ha I do know people who have and they really do enjoy them, so. I think I think you can you can all tell that we have a, a bit of a bias towards CTE um, because we've um, over the years uh, the years that I've been here and um, you know we've been we've been hearing about the real need to expose students to the career center and um, you know not everything at the career center um, follows a, a college credit. Um, there's other courses there that you get a certification from. Um, and so, uh, you know, listening to the governor this year during the state of the state, he actually talked about the need to elevate the, 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 um, the career center education to the same level as a, as a, a college education. Um, because there's, um, you know, there's some people, some students that are destined to go to college and that's a great path for them but there's other students that aren't, um, but we wanna make sure that they have a skill as well when they, when they leave high school and possibly maybe move on to college in a slower, slower way. Um, maybe through certifications that, that would help get to them, get a, an associate's degree at VTC or something. Um, and have you, so have all of you um, been exposed or know about dual enrollment program that, that we do? And so we're looking at uh, creating something in the same, the, the same as dual enrollment, but for adult CTE programs for certification. So like Leah, you could, um, you could, you could uh, have your, have an LNA program certification paid for, um, because right now you can't go through dual enrollment with that if it's taught at the CTE. Um, and, and possibly CDL uh, for students to, to uh, go through the CDL program. So when they turn 18, they could go and get their, their uh, permit for CDL and all kinds of other different things that are taught on the adult side of the CTE. So do you think that has um, any potential? Braden? Yeah, I think that would be great if younger kids could get at least like exposed and maybe not take like practicals like really like hands-on but if they could get all the book work done for like their fire one to get them interior certified like as soon as they turn 18 i think that would be so beneficial because i would do that mm -hmm. yeah and, and we we're also you know thinking about making sure that you know if there's students that are that are financial have a hard time financially um, being able to attend the class because of transportation or or other issues that need equipment or or anything like that that we just like dual enrollment um, there would be that that back end help to make sure that all students are able to access uh, at least one course yeah I think that'd be great anyone else Reagan um, I think it would be helpful. It would definitely be a cool experience for a lot of kids who like already know that they want to go into, into like, cause some kids know from a young age that they're like, Oh, I'm going to go to a trade school. I don't want to go to college. So if you like know already, you're like, yeah, college isn't for me. And you're actually given like the opportunity to like go and like figure stuff out and try and see what you like on the like trade school end of things. I think that would be really helpful because they do really like drill college into your mind from a very young age. So I think it would be cool if like kids could actually be like, oh, well, I don't really want to do college. So can I like do some cool classes and like get help towards trade school already and like get it done? Cause I'm doing early college. 
So that's like a year early for me. And I don't think they have anything like that for like, if I wanted to go to like a trade school and do something, like, I don't think my school would be like, yeah, just go do that. So I think it'd be cool if it was an option for both like college classes and like technical center classes. I don't know what you'd call it, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Any thoughts, Melody or Leah? Um, kind of like what Reagan was saying, like having programs available for like, um, like specifically to what you want to do, like if you know exactly what you want to do. And I don't know if this is similar, but I know my school does school to work, which is basically you go to a workplace of some sort of where you have a career interest in. Like for me, I go to a dentist's office and you go there and you observe and then Sometimes from those programs, you can get certifications depending on where you are um, or like what the career is. Cause obviously I can't get any certifications from observing at the dentist's office, but it's definitely a leg up in the college field or even in the trade school field, you basically have options to go anywhere where a place of business will let you go in and observe. So it's really helpful. Leah, do you think that, you know, if that was had been available to you, that you may have, um, you know, taken an LNA course maybe in 10th grade and got in and, and gotten your certification? Um, so the thing is, sophomore year, I was still exploring what I wanted to do. I think at the beginning of sophomore year, I still wanted to go into English. Um, but I think with last year, I think we were supposed to do something with LNA, but because of COVID, we couldn't. Um, but for other students who are sure of what they want to do, if a sophomore is sure that they want to go into healthcare, I think it would be a good idea for them. Yeah. So this would be, this would start in the 10th grade and, and it would be after school. So it would be a night course that you would have to take. So, you know, it's got to be for somebody that's really motivated and know what they want to do. Um, and there are a lot of a lot of students like you out there that, that have that motivation. And we've heard from CTE directors that this has been a, a real hindrance for for students that just want those certifications and and not a college uh, credit. And so we're going to try this out and see if it works. And just wanted to know if you thought that that uh, that would be um, that would be helpful. But also how. Um, um, how important do you think it should be for you to understand everything that's available to you? So, you, you know, the, the career center is available, college is available. And so you get all the information you need and try out everything and then make your decision on your pathway going forward. I think, um... It would be a really good idea because like, as I said earlier, all they really drilled into my head was college. So I feel like if at a younger age, if I knew more about like different career paths, I would have been like, oh, maybe I don't want to do this or maybe I want to look into something else. I think it's a good idea if you were to do it like as a night course or like outside of school, because then if you're really motivated, you'll do it. But if you're just like, oh, I want to do it, but I don't really want to take it seriously, then you wouldn't, you know? So it, it would like help us know that like, oh, you actually want to do it because it's like a night course. It's going to be a lot. So you're going to need, you're going to need to be motivated. So you would have to be motivated in order to do that. So I think that would be really helpful. Okay. Um, I also think it would be beneficial for not only students, but maybe community members who want to go into healthcare because I know that one of my family members actually approached me and asked me if Riverbend did night classes. Um, I think they do, but I don't know. And uh, they also asked me if uh, Riverbend like offered LNA courses. And um, I said, well, you know, we're going to be doing our LNA through Cottage, but um, I think it would be a nice thing for all, not only for younger students, but also for others who uh, have graduated high school um, who want to go into any sort of vocational career. Yeah. So, and we do have, we do have grants out there for them. Um, we have the advancement grants 
um, that are available to um, to people that have already graduated high school. Um, that's why we're creating this because there's, we found a hole here where you know adults can that have graduated can access it. Students um, that haven't graduated yet but are going for a, a college course can get college credit paid for. But the students that are in between that are still in high school but want to do a, a you know a, get a career uh, certification at the at the career center in the evening instead, um, it's not available to them. What I would say to you, if you have those those community members asking you, um, ask them to talk to VZAC, have them call VZAC because they do, they have career counselors. Um, Mr. Leduc can, can tell you that he's one of them. Um, and he has he has access to, to all of that. So, you know, I think we all wanna make sure that, that people are able to get the education that they're seeking. Committee, do you, anyone have any questions for these students that we have with us today? It's a great opportunity, Lynn. Yeah, um, it sounds like you're all pretty mature. And um, one of the things now I'm going to ask you in your experience, obviously, the four of you are looking either at college or some higher education, post-secondary education, and you've got some pretty good idea of your path forward. Are a lot of the youngsters in these um, programs, in the CTE programs, or in your high school, are they looking at um, going on to college, or are they looking for trades or apprenticeships, or what are they looking for? And second of all, I just want to know, can you talk a little bit about the hands-on experience of the CTE programs that are not just theoretical out of a book, but are real hands-on courses? We have experiences. Right. Yeah, I like the fact that you can actually be hands on. I just wish it was more directed towards fire science because that's what I want to do. But mm -hmm. I understand that like kids definitely need the hands on experience because if you're not hands on, I feel like I can't learn from just reading it. I need to be hands on and and reading a book. I can do that, but I just have to read it from a book. It's a yeah. yeah, which allows it to do but, so. Um, I say in my school, it's kind of like 50-50. A lot of kids go to this career program, Stafford, um, but they end up not following what they did in the program, maybe like switching it to a different career, which is totally okay. But then another 50% of them know what they want to do go into that program and then this year graduating to hopefully go into a trade school or college. But I feel like it would be a lot more helpful. Reagan. Um, Cold Hollow, like our career center is very hands-on or um, in any way that they can be, they are. Like I know the business program, they had a bagel place for a while that they like actually put in town I know our forestry and construction and everything like that, it's very hands-on. And everyone who does it really likes it and they're very involved because it's like half of the school day. So you have to like really like experience everything because all of the like things that are being focused on are very hands-on um, like pathways if they're gonna go that way for their career. A lot of the people in Cold Hollow are definitely like, oh, I'm gonna go to trade school. Like I'm doing Cold Hollow because I don't wanna go to college. That's that might just be like my area. I'm not sure if it's like that for everybody, but Cold Hollow is very like based on like things in the community that a lot of people already do. So like there are a lot of kids who go into forestry because like their dad does the same thing or like it's their family business is surrounding that. So they're just gonna do that and then like keep doing it throughout their entire lives because that's what their dad did or that's what their uncle did or like mom or you know what I mean so a lot of them are definitely like oh I'm doing this because I don't want to go to college yeah Melody yeah so kind of what um like Reagan was saying our school is also and she's had like a really good way of explaining it um not only in the CTU program, but in our entire school, I feel like it's split kind of 50-50 between college and um, trade school. 
And I feel like a lot of students also do what their parents do. Um, there's a lot of LNAs here because of the nursing home. So I know a lot of students from here are going to nursing school. And if they're not, a lot of the students are going to trade school, kind of like what Reagan was saying, like logging, working on like automobiles and stuff. And I think that's great. And a lot of the programs our school offers allows exposure to those things to make sure those students enjoy that. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't a part of any CT programs because I felt like my school didn't really make me entirely aware of it. But I know a lot of other students in my school who were able to be a part of the program have definitely benefited from it and are learning what they're interested um, going forward after high school because of those programs. I know a lot of the students who are in the business CT program are like, I want to do business. This is like great for me. And they've learned a lot from it. Um, a lot of the programs that are are very hands-on. I think that's uh, pretty much to the crux of all the programs. Um, for mine, definitely. Uh, we've learned a lot and we're actually going to be getting our basic lights, uh, basic life support uh, credential tomorrow. So um, there's that. And then I know the cosmetology program has, they also went through inspection and I think they're now an operating salon is what I heard. So very hands-on and also getting that real world experience as well. John? Um, each of you has chosen um, to take advantage of CTE or dual enrollment like Reagan has here. Based on your observations, conversations with um, uh, your fellow students, um, is there are there any programs that are not being offered that you'd like to see be offered at CTE? Yeah, for me personally, living in such a small town, I feel like we don't have as many programs for CTE. Um, on like a broad range. The only ones I'm aware of, I think one of them is building trades possibly and then the business program, but I haven't been told about like a broad range of these things because I felt like I would have been more aware of them if we had more. So I feel like towns like mine that are like really small, not only I feel like some of the students should be more aware of it because I wasn't and I know some other students may not have been that's just for me personally, but I think where I live, we definitely need more CTE programs because I feel like we don't have a lot of um, available to us, but that may be different for other schools ha who have more students. Reagan? Um, my area is also kind of small, so I definitely get what you're saying about um, like the limited choices because all of the stuff at Cold Hollow is essentially like forestry, like construction, like fixing cars and like very like specific things. There are there's a couple little like programs that aren't focused around that kind of thing, but they're not as popular. And I think because we're in such a like we're not a little air, like area, but like it's not big, like we're not in a city. So there aren't very many opportunities for us to like get outside of town and be like, oh, I want to do this, but there's nowhere in Enosburg that would like help me out here. So I guess I'm going to have to drive to St. Albans. Like that's not really a thing. I feel like if we had more opportunities, that would be really helpful because there are only like at most maybe like eight programs in Cold Hollow and there are like two or three that aren't like super based around the outdoors. So I feel like it would be cool if they had more possibilities. Like, like someone said cosmetology, like we would never have that. Like that would be something people would be interested in, but we're not going to have it because like we sugar and stuff. So I feel like it'd be cool to have a variety <laughs> of stuff, just the same thing. <laughs> trees are cool, but not everyone's into trees. So I feel like it'd be nice to like, move from that. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Raiden? Your thoughts? Yeah, I wish that they did more at Stafford. I feel like they definitely have enough kids to expand the program and maybe generalize like a direct career path instead of like 
you can go in for public safety, but it doesn't like really define like what public safety you're going into. It's like, but they direct it more towards like the military and police, which is okay, but it would be nice if at Stafford they offered something for fire science because I would definitely do that. Or even um, I heard some people like would like to do like more into like engineering. Like I feel like the engineering program at Stafford isn't the best, but it's something at least. At least they have like something to work off, but I feel like if they advance more and do more inside the program, I think it would be very successful. Um, Riverbend's pretty diverse in their programs. I think we have well more than 10. I can't, I don't know for sure how many programs we have, but um, they, they're very, we have a very large variety, um, anything from agriculture to like media design to um, automotive carpentry, all sorts of programs. And yeah, that's about it. Great, thank you. Other questions, committee or our students? Well, thank you all very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, we really appreciate your time and, and um, your willingness to answer our questions. Um, really does help us either validate what we're trying to do or um, gives us some other information of other areas that we may need to look at. Um, so we are, uh, but I do uh, again want to Make sure you you look at 703 once it gets through the whole process and the governor signs it, because there is a lot of money in there that will go to help students uh, going to college, um, to help pay uh, for scholarships, um, help pay tuition, um, help to keep you in Vermont mm -hmm. if you shoot if you choose to do that. Um, but we uh, we also wish the best for all of you in your um, future endeavors after high school. Um, just make sure that you go and make us proud. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, thank you for joining us. Um, Patrick, we'll talk to you again on uh, bringing the, the, uh, the other students um, to meet with us. Um, try to make possibly next Tuesday again, um, if this time works. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, the adult students. I'm sorry I missed that last night. I wound up having to work, so I, I couldn't get on. But um, I'm sure that uh, you know the next students that, that we talk to um, uh, that are graduating and then our adult students that will be joining us will be helpful to us. Um, so have a good evening, everyone, and, and thank you again. Thank you. Hi, thank you. So committee, I think we're done for the day. Um, um, I guess maybe people that visited a few committees today, if you want to just fill us in on how that went. Emma? Yeah. Wayne? So uh, Wayne, and, Wayne and I went to go visit House Corrections and Institutions to speak about section um, six of H703. This is the justice involved individuals piece of it. It was interesting. Um, and I think by the time we got to the end of it, I stayed a little bit longer because there was some confusion around funding sources, uh, a whole world of corrections that we don't necessarily know much about uh, collectively as a committee around money that gets returned when it's not used for, fo for folks that they house in correction facilities outside the state apparently comes back to the state of Vermont and goes into the general fund. And there's a whole discussion around, it's all the same money, it's different money, et cetera. So they didn't have as much critique about the policy, but more about the, um, funding sources, which I sort of anticipated. Um, but I think they got to a place at, by the end of the discussion where they, um, they're they going to probably make some language recommendations to have their fingerprints a little bit more on this corrections piece, which I said is totally fair. And we, you know, we were putting a lot in in our timeline. It was very quick last week that it was not ideal for anyone. We, I was very polite and respectful about that. So we might make some adjustments. I mentioned that we have a, a amendment already in the works for 703 because there's so many moving parts. We, we um, would be happy to, hope I didn't overspeak, but happy to work with them to yeah, put that piece no, in. for sure. Um, and they said on the money part in the end, 
uh, they didn't take the vote yet, but they were very clear that um, they did a straw poll on the money, this, this specifically the $417,000 that would go directly to Department of Corrections in here to basically enhance our current vocational training, both the facility location space stuff, as well as looking at curriculum and redesign of their training programs. Um, they did take a star poll that says that would not come from what they call the JR2 funds, which is the justice investment right. or return, um, reinvestment, reinvestment, reinvestment money, which is where the confusion was all originating from. So they said that we're not going to mess with that. They already made appropriations recommendations to the appropriations in their budget letter on that. So it's not coming from that. And now they, they moved on to something else, but they hadn't quite decided about how they, if they were going to um, recommend our approach of this coming from other general fund money, not to confuse it, went here, but not, we were never looking to compete with what they had already earmarked or hoped for for JR2 money. So it was promising by the time we got to the end. It was, it was an interesting hour and a half, or hour and however long it was there. So, okay. yep. So it's the 300 for from hours for women. That was fine. fine. That was fine. So the upper amount, they will vote on some dollar amount. Yes, and they will. They they didn't. They spoke as more on the 417. To be honest, yep. they didn't talk that much about the 300. That seemed yep. much more straightforward to them. And I think again, it's because 417 was coming with the stair two confusion piece, yep. and I guess also Representative Squirrel was their appropriations point person. Um, was coming back with some variations on their JR2 proposal. So they were talking about several things all at once. So from what I can tell, they'll get back to us on where they think our, our 417 would be. And they might change the number so that everyone's not so confused about uh, the problem. Or 18, maybe. I don't know. Easy to get along with. Uh, easy to get along with. Logan? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I went up to Human Services just to kind of walk them through some of the sections of the bill. Uh, they were very excited about a lot of the sections. They're really excited about the med Medicaid rate uh, attempt there. Um, they seemed to feel like it was a long shot themselves, but they definitely, they sounded like they were very supportive. I did not get a, uh, you know, straw poll or formal vote from them, but they uh, asked a lot of great questions. They did. It sounded like they may have wanted us to put in more explicit language that called out um, adult education, uh, as opposed to just the findings language that we had in there. And adult, some of the adult, um, just making sure adult access to CTEs. I told them that I, I thought that that was in there with the CTE governance structure and um, reports. Uh, but, you know, they just questioned that they, they didn't really read that out of it, per se. Um, so that was kind of their only comment was just that they they felt like maybe older Vermonters were not as um, explicit in, in our language either. But you know, I, I, my opinion is that it's all intertwined with all the nursing restructuring and, and everything else that's in the bill already. Um, and they were not that they were critical, but they they just said that they didn't necessarily read that on their first path, yep. and they may have wanted that to be a little more explicit. Yep. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, it sounded like they were generally supportive. Um, really excited about the recovery work, recovery centers initiative, and um, and yeah, a lot of the the Medicaid rate was something that they were very. They hope that it succeeds. Yeah. And I think, you know, it was a little disappointing, I think, to us too, that, you know, we talked about people that are retired, older, older Vermonters. And, you know, we were, we've been trying to find out what the barriers are, but I think most of the barriers that, that we heard about either dealt with employers um, or dealt with federal issues that are out of our control. Yep. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I think we were looking for that bullet that we could put in there that could assist, but we didn't really find anything. But um, maybe we can think about stronger language for uh, just to put in there that talks about retirement and, and what we could, you know. Yeah, legislative intent. Yeah. I was thinking along the, the same line, lines because I have a constituent who's very, very focused on on the um, uh, older older workforce, and I was thinking, especially as I was thinking about how to respond to him of what is in 703, the um, Department of Labor 
what we're up to at hand. Eight FTEs, you know, to really expand upon the regional navigators that ring the bell, navigator folks to um, really work with employers and work with um, matchmaking and really pathway folks. You know, I don't know if there's something in there where we could be a more a little explicit. And so I'm sure Sarah and the office really does work, that works with everyone sure. and they're really positioned for that. And we haven't had that capacity and resource recently. And so that's a change. That's a change that can hopefully really um, level up capacity in the region. So would you both like to touch base with Sarah to see if you might be able to come up with some language that we could weave in there with David um, to strengthen that, you know, that approach that we want to see? Just to make sure that they are collaborating with older Vermonter agencies yeah. or yeah well you know like they no. you know these navigators are supposed to pull everybody together so they're Bring they're, they're bringing restorative justice they're they're working with you know probation and parole and but are they working with aarp um or are they working with the area agency on aging Before. you know those so hope you know those should be the the groups if we're looking to bring um, older vermonters and retired vermonters into the workforce if they choose um yeah. Those are the groups that they yeah, could, be, could be convening because that's what we want these navigators to Exciting. Do. Yeah, I can, I'll, I'll send out an email and I'll try to loop in maybe Teresa or Dan too. Okay. And in the memo that Sarah had sent us this morning to go over all the pieces of this um, new six yeah, the place or, organization. It's, Older Vermonters are older workers are listed in that, uh, but it's just it's not strong. I mean, it's yeah. just so, in, like in the list of. Yeah, what can we do to strengthen that a little bit more? Great. Really? I guess education. Did you get educated? Education was good. They wanted to know really what we had done with 377. And so that was the language that we had in the end uh, with Advanced Vermont. And um, they were happy to see what it was. and. Basically, uh, content with the fact that the stakeholders had forged an agreement. They were pretty excited about it. So they had some other questions, uh, but nothing really ear shattering. Okay. There's, there's been a number of questions around the CTE program, uh, but Mike was there to field those in terms of the CTE construction program. Is there a shorter thing we can use for that? Building trades. Building trades. Building trades. All right. Yeah, revolving loan fund. You know that one. Um, so they had some questions about it, but we were able to answer those. I think. Kind of like, how'd you come up with fifteen million? Yeah. Well, that. <laughs> I was there. Well, while it's here, here, we'll use it. <laughs> if you really think about. You know what we're asking them to do when you talk about blighted properties you could be talking about some serious dollars just to oh, yeah. just to, for remediation yeah. not not just and also you know we talked about the possibility of these these students could be working in the summertime so we, we there's money there to pay them to, to work so i think they they i think they felt comfortable after that that you know that you're talking about 15 cte centers too so um, you know, 15 million might seem like a, a big amount, but when you start coming down to it, um, it may not be. Okay, so I think we're good for today. Um, any questions before we go, Lynn? Who picked out those four kids? They were really impressive. Yeah. yeah. All over in there. Yeah. I, and um, I, I think it really means a lot to bring the kids in. And, and I mean, we've done that before here in the Physical, building. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really, for us, it brings, it gives us value because we see what, what some of the policy changes or policies that we want to do, how meaningful it can be for them um, as they go through the system. Um, but also it, it, it ties them into the state government mm -hmm. and, and know that there's people here that are, actually care. Um, it's not what they see on TV all the time. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> well, we are on TV now. I'm not going to go to the national theaters. Remember, this is what my father watches all day. He watches the cameras. <laughs> Maybe he's one of the stuff. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we, we actually sit here and we're, you know, three different parties that sit here and we all get along together and we all actually are working together. Uh, so I think that's really important for everyone to see. 
So I think with that, we can uh, get off live.